Hello guys, today I'll be showing you how to add different colors to separate parts of an object. For example here using a wind turbine as an example. And what I mean by that, when you go to... Uh, let's select random... Uh, sorry for that. Okay. Now, this is not what we want. Let's say we wanted to add a separate material, we had a set of materials and we wanted to randomly apply each one to a different object, not a different point. Well, that wouldn't work really just using this node, because this node randomly distributes values across each point without considering they're part of a bigger object. So let's fix that. And we're going to have to use a for loop here, so let's go... Uh, with each connected piece. This object's got nothing special with it, it's just got a name attribute that we won't use, a shop material from Cinema 4D, but that doesn't work either. So it's just a basic model. Um, let's go down. <clears throat> now this connectivity piece is really useful. So what it does is it looks at the object, at whatever object you've got, and checks whether each, what points are not connected to what pieces. For example, you can see this pipe here. <coughs> it goes around the turbine, around the turbine, it just kind of, let's just look on inside, yeah, it's just kind of capped off, just stuffed in there. So that connectivity point, it knows that this is one object, this is object A, this is object B, and it creates a, an attribute that differentiates between the two, and that is used then in the for loop, and you can see it here, piece attribute class. And you can see this attribute actually in a geometry spreadsheet because we're dealing with primitives with faces here, not with points. Mm, you can see that here, up to point 0.4, all these are well, primitive 4, all these are one object, then the next object, and the next. If you want to see the first object, why has it only got so few faces? Let's have a look if this is all correct. Let's go single pass. Ah, there it is. Ah, so it's starting from the back. Okay, so yeah, that would be pretty easy to figure out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah, just four faces. Okay, so this is one piece, because when you go back here, you can see it's not connected to any other piece. It's just stuck in there. All right, so how do we change that? So let's get a... We're still going to need this attribute randomize node, but what we're also going to need is... The problem with for loops in Houdini is, which is not really a problem, it's just something that happens, um, is when Houdini iterates over each part, even if you've got, let's say, some random mechanics going on, it's going to repeat that same random mechanic over and over the same way for each object, so essentially you're not going to get that. You're not going to get nothing random. Um, and that's something that's not easy to figure out at the beginning. Uh, I was left scratching my head for quite a while how to do it. Anyway, let's show you how to do it now. We're going to need another block begin, one of these. Um, block begin, the blue one. And here we're going to use the metadata. Now thanks to this metadata we can see what iteration we're working with. When the for loop goes over each object, with this metadata we know what object, what number it is going over and we can use that number to drive some random stuff and then we can use that random stuff to drive the random color or random attribute that we're then going to use to assign a material to. So let's connect this to this bottom block because it has to know what to reference. Alright, now let's have a look if it's there. Iteration 1802, because it's at the last one. Let's do a single pass of 6, and there it is. We can see that it's on iteration 6. So this number keeps changing depending on the iteration. That's going to be very helpful. But we can't assign nothing to something that requires something to have the attribute assigned to. It has to have some kind of point where this attribute goes through, because it's um. It's a detail attribute, so it covers the entire object. This whole chain is going to have the same detail attribute 
regardless of whether it's one point or two or doesn't have any at all. So let's add a point. Okay, then if we press this, it's still going to have the same iteration attribute, which is fantastic. Right, so now we do have something that changes over time, but how do we incorporate that into the attribute randomize? Well, we've got something like a global seed, and if we wouldn't have these two blocks above, this wouldn't work and we would have the same result over and over because the global seed would remain at 2.62 every iteration. That wouldn't work. So it just wouldn't look, um, <clears throat> you wouldn't get the results you want. So for the line of code, we're going to have to somehow add the detail attribute to this global seed. We can use that using an expression that I don't remember, but I have a previous project where I did do this. So not to worry. Let's pop that there. The multiply by two we don't need because it just multiplies the value. Let's say it was iteration six, then it would be iteration 12. We need the iteration attribute. That's what we're looking for. But we're looking for block begin one. This is, we have to change this because it has to reference this block from where the attribute comes from. So let's do block begin one. I think technically you could reference this add node. Um, I'm pretty sure that would work, but as a security measure, I just reference the first block. Okay, so now we have the block driving the seed. So let's add that randomness to the to the object itself. And we're going to do that using a copy attribute. Let's grab that. We're dealing with points here because we're coloring each point. Let's bring that down a bit. Because we can't use primitives, unfortunately, because we don't have any. We've got one point. Now we haven't even initialized it. And so if we'd want to use a point attribute to drive so let's say um, add a material to, we would have to convert that into a primitive attribute, or then group it, or group it as a point attribute and then convert that group into a primitive one. So let's just do a quick, um, let's actually do a max iterations. If we've got 1,800 iterations, that's going to be quite a bit. Let's do 100, single pass, bam, there we go. And each part has got a different color. Let's add more of them. So unlike, let's just compare it. I'm just typing randomize, that'll save me a lot of time. There we go. Not what we want, what we want. And you can use this kind of randomization for literally anything. You can select between a set of, um, a set of values that you want to choose from uniform discrete sorry um continuous or oh, which one was it custom discrete there we go and you can select you can choose let's say 0.2 maybe 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 and let's add another one one there we go now we've got different shades We've got five shades of grey. <laughs> no pun intended. Right, so let's say we wanted to use this and drive different because you can only get that far with Houdini colours in the nodes, but we would want to use them for actual materials. How do we do that? So let's grab a material node. Now, because we're working with points, we're going to have to convert that to primitive somehow. So let's add a group node. We have to clump them together. And here we're going over points. We're using the color attribute, so CD. Let's say anything above or anything below 0.5. There we go. Now let's see if this works using a blast, just to make sure. Yeah, and it's only selecting the shades that are below the 0.5 value, so we can now um, group that again. 
actually. Delete that, will it get rid of the old one? I don't know, just to make it clean. Now we can put that into a new group, we can call that uh, CD1, let's say. And is it there? Now, and now this one covers primitives. This group covers points. This one covers primitives. And we can split this one into as many as we want. Um, let's say this one was 4.3. This one was 4.8. Or we can do a 0.8. In fact, we can put one group in the other, like so. You can just stack them one after the other. Let's pop that one there. No. And we can slowly decrease the value from one group to the next. Then, after the blast node, we can group them back together under different names. So let's group CD1 here. Group CD2 here. In fact, because they're the same. Well, they're not, are they? Uh, goes anything below 0.8. And then anything below 0.3. Oh, so maybe that should be the other way around. There we go. So now we can delete non-selected, just these few. We can keep that. Let's call this one CD2. And then we can add, merge them all together. Pop that in here. And we've got our separate groups that we can colour in depending how we want. So, happy to help.